Welcome back, my dear Lightbulls, to another Boku no Hero Academia review, aka Boku no Greatness, aka Boku no Goat, aka My Hero Academia. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe so you become part of the Lightbulb Army. And I just want to say a huge shout out to Chaotic Plus, my friend, for making me the thumbnail for this week's review. You should check out his channel. He also does My Hero Academia content and, and other anime and manga related content as well. So his link will be in the description below. So I just got to say this chapter of My Hero Academia was great. I was wrong in last week's review. I thought that was the ending of the arc. But this chapter is the ending of the League of Villains arc, which whatever you want to call it, or the villain, My Villain Academia arc, because one of the chapters, I believe, was titled My Villain Academia. So this is the end of My Villain Academia arc. And, oh, man, I'm I'm sad to see it see. Um, I, I'm sad to see it go. Sorry about that. But it said danger looms. Like at the end of this chapter, it said that danger looms. So danger is still going to happen. And there was so much stuff we got in this chapter. So much hype. Horikoshi does it once again. This entire arc has been great. So we got some establishments in this arc. Hawks was in the reunion with the Liberation Army. He was talking to people. He's still a double agent and stuff. And he just. He's just shocked. He's just like, oh man, what happened in Deacon City was these guys. Um, they moved too fast. I couldn't report all this in time. And now he's Hawks is literally too late. He couldn't prevent any of this. Like he had the information he got was so late where it everything's already established. Like literally Shigaraki, Tomura Shigaraki is like an overlord right now. And that he's like a king in a castle. F first of all. All the resources of that net has been passed on to him. Reed Destro acknowledges him, which when Reed Destro acknowledges him in front of the Liberation Army members, obviously people are going to accept him. Even though some people might still follow Reed, Reed Destro and Mr. Skeptic even almost called him Supreme Leader again, but he said Reed Destro, he caught himself. They still look up to Reed Destro, but if Reed Destro says something, they're going to follow it because a lot of the followers of Reed Destro, um, he says, you know, they believe whatever comes out of his mouth um, is the ideals of Destro. It's what Destro had wanted. And a lot of these people are probably from Destro's generation as well. And they follow Destro. And now they're following Destro's son, Reed Destro, to, you know, continue his dream. So if he says Shigaraki is a new liberator, they're going to listen to that. And they're going to follow him. It's kind of like they're not brain they're not brainwashed, but they're just like they vote followers to. Well, it, it kind of is like they're brainwashed. Like they just they just follow without really thinking about the actions that Reed Destro is doing. So after he passes the mantle of everything, all the resources he has, Reed Destro just becomes like the biggest Shigaraki fanboy, which I did not expect him to be because he was so serious in the beginning of the arc. But after he does that, he's like, oh, Shigaraki, you need anything else? You need anything? And then Shigaraki is like, get lost. And then he just runs away. So it's like... A total character um, paradigm shift right there in Reed Destro's character from a very serious character, very cunning, very calculating to like Shigaraki's servant basically. So I don't know if his legs made him crazy or whatever. Nah, I'm just playing around. But we, we know why he's like that because he sees Shigaraki as what Destro wanted Liberation to be and the leader of, of the Liberation, the Meta Liberation Army to be is a liberator and Shigaraki is that he has the power to liberate the masses with his insane decay quirk which right now is just strong enough to destroy an entire city now he did not destroy the entire Dika city but if he wanted you know and he had the rest he could have destroyed it because we got to realize that Shigaraki when he was in Dika city and he didn't get arrest like his um the other league members they were more rested than him and he was always sp sparring with gigatomaki almost dying day and night and you know he still he still beat reed Destro. Uh, and reed Destro had a machine that amplified his stress level which somebody asked in the comment section of that review when he used that machine um why did they use the machine because the machine actually makes him more stressful and makes his quirk more powerful so he could overcome the 100 percent limiter um, which a lot of course have like he broke out out of 100 percent and was like 150 percent or whatever and even with all of that shigaraki was still strong enough to actually um defeat redestro and redestro took his legs because he didn't want to fully decay and die now one thing i didn't like um i did say in my review um last week's review with redestro taking his leg like obviously he's the president of that net and stuff and they make hero tools hero equipment and I wanted him to get actually robotic legs, 
But no, he got like he got like some he got like some machine with four legs and then he's it's like a wheelchair type machine and he just he's just rolling on that which uh, a lot of people are saying that Redestro's Eggman now which it's just hilarious. The people when they comment after um a week's chapter or after a chapter are just so funny. Some people are like the Jokers in my hero academia now, Harley Quinn, um Deadpool, which you know, it's a lot of inspiration from Western comics in my hero academia for the characters. And there's nothing wrong with that, obviously, to be inspired by a character and create a character that is similar to another character. There is nothing wrong with that. So Plus, Horiko, she's a big fan of Western comics as well. So that's really cool when two mediums come together and we get what My Hero Academia is. So that was a lot I just said right there. Now, um, like I said before, the basement level of that net is it's just it's just crazy. It's like a giant um, assembly hall. And Gigatomakia is there like a child just looking at his master and stuff. So it was cool. It was really cool. Hawks was in the crowd. There was a girl that looked like Ochako. I don't know if that was Toga that she transformed or whatever. But literally, um, in one panel, I believe Hawks was next to her. And the girl literally looked like Ochako. Like, like Ochako right there. I'm like, wait, wait, what, what's happening? Ochako, you're the traitor? Not even stuff like I, I, I definitely don't think Ochako's a traitor or anything like that. So all of these events happen. Now I feel so bad for Hawks because he's a double agent and he literally kind of just failed. He's, he did say like towards the end, you know, I got to warn Endeavor. I got to tell everybody, the police, everybody. But at this point, he realizes something very critical, something really important. And that Shigaraki has these advanced gnomos, which I don't know if they're stronger than high end yet or not. Nobody knows. But if they are stronger than high end and high end was just a prototype, I don't know what to say to the Hero Association. I, I, the police force, are they're not going to do anything. But the Hero Association, because it's just like, um, high end, you saw, how it took two heroes, the number one hero and the number two hero to take it down. And if these gnomos, these new gnomos are stronger than high end, it's just like, wh what are they going to do? All Might is retired. All Might cannot use his, his quirk. He can only go buff. Uh, his buff form, which is actually his original, you know, body type, but he got that injury, so he, you know, he's skinny and stuff. But he can't fight. Endeavor is never going to be as strong as All Might. They said, you know, since the beginning of the series, you know, with the parallels between All Might and Endeavor, like the power gap. It's like All Might was always on a mountain, and Endeavor was always on the bottom of that mountain, looking up. Like, he couldn't climb that mountain, and even if he did, he will still be on the base level because All Might was that strong. And with All Might gone, with All for One in prison, and Shigaraki, you know, taking the mantle of uh, his master, of his sensei, All for One, taking his name as well, we got Midori on the other hand, which a lot of people were mad when this, uh, it was revealed that Midori is going to get multiple quirks later on in the future. But now Shigaraki, the power balance, you know, has changed. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll, I think that Shigaraki, even before it was confirmed that Midoriya will get other quirks, that Shigaraki was stronger than Midoriya if they fought one-on-one. -on -one. But now, it's like, it's no contest. Shigaraki's on another level. Shigaraki is city level, meaning he could destroy an entire city if he wanted to. 100% well rested Shigaraki, he could do it by himself if the decay quirk is strong enough. And anybody that, you know, gets touched with the decay is going to die. No matter how strong you are, you're going to die. If Or crumble a little bit, unless you're like Hiroshima and, you use, and Hiroshima used that hardening that he did um, in the overhaul arc. But you know, everybody else, if you're just standing there and the decay hates you, you know, you're gonna lose a limb or two, okay? Unless you cut it off like Reed Destro. So right there and then, um, Hawks realizes the severity uh, that they're in. Like Shigaraki, he has surpassed the Hero Association. He has an arsenal, which, you know, it, it just surpasses it. The thing is, Shigaraki has over 100,000 members now um, with him from that now they're all now all part of the same front the uh, i believe it was like the what was this called the paranormal liberation front so it was called the, yeah that's the name of it he has all these members right the paranormal liberation front this is the new name no more league of villains and shigaraki even said the league of villains like that's that was not really a good we're not villains anymore we're above that like shigaraki's literally like we are above villains being villains anymore like we're we're something beyond that so 
that's really amazing. And then he also said with the um, new name that, you know, names are like a decoration. They don't mean anything unless you do something with it, which is true. Like, you can have the toughest name, hero name, villain name, but if you're getting your butt kicked and getting L's week after week, then it doesn't really mean anything. So, Shiraki says that, but obviously, this new team, this new group, they definitely mean something. They are very powerful. Not only strength flies in numbers and stuff, but they also have this information network. We got um, a skeptic and we got other members, Hanabata and stuff, that uh, they could just control, skeptic could control information. He could twist words around and they made it seem like this footage of Dika City where just 20 random people that they, the citizens of Dika City fought and they kill the 20 people and stuff. And then the citizens basically were regarded as heroes. Some people were against it, against them actually using their quirks in combat because a lot of the citizens actually died during all this destruction. Uh, not only in the regular fights, but because Shigaraki leveled a lot of the city. So all those people died that got hit with the decay. And, you know, it was spun that, no, the citizens, they fought for their city and all that stuff. The heroes were somewhere else. But... Obviously, not everybody buys it, so there's still an ongoing investigation about what really happened in Deacon City. But because Skeptic has a big information network, you know, it made it seem like, okay, the Deacon citizens did this. Now, the point of that was not only to cover the former League of Villains name, but it was also to make people more comfortable with random citizens, regular citizens using their quirks because a lot of the citizens of other cities were like a, a complimenting them. They were like, they were heroes. They are heroes. Like for what they did, they protected their cities against these, you know, renegade rebellion and stuff like that. These 20 uh, make-believe people. And because of that, if people are applauding them, that's going to make more people's mindset change. And, you know, and be like, oh man, they use their quirks to protect themselves. I'm going to start using my quirk. And it could be a thing where the government is trying to suppress um, regular citizens from using their quirks, even if they're using it for good, because obviously there's big regulations by the police force, the government, where only heroes with licenses can use their quirks in public. And that's going to bring more people to the Meta Liberation Army, which their new name, you know, it's not Meta, it's a superpower um, liberation Paranormal Liberation Front, sorry about that, that's like superpowers. I'm still thinking about other stuff. Um, no, Paranormal Liberation Front, and you know, they're gonna go grow bigger and bigger. And I'm just shocked because it's like, what are the heroes going to do? What are they going to do? And then Hawks ha had a bag, a duffel bag. He opens the bag. I rewrite this chapter um, a couple of times. Opens the duffel bag. I miss this the first read through, obviously, but. And inside, it was Best Genus, supposedly Best Genus. I don't know if that's a clone, not a clone, like like something like, and somebody had a quirk and replicated Best Genus, but we do know Hawks went to Best Genus' house. I hope he did, I, hope, I don't think that's the real Best Genus. Uh, and if it is, Hawks literally killed somebody. Like, okay, there's a limit on how much you could be a double agent. He just did that to prove his worth to um, Dobby and, you know, be in cahoots with Dobby so Dobby accepts him. And, you know, Dobby's like, hey, I don't know who this is, but you killed somebody. But, hey, even if it's not best genius, you, you're you in. You're part of us. You, you killed somebody. And it's just like, holy cow, this is just getting crazier and crazier. We're getting so much stuff. I'm really happy about it. Shigaraki has Gigatomachia, the Nomus. Um, Dr. Ujiko said he wants um, a delivery of something. I don't know what it is on that panel. It was like a, it looks like a silhouette of a mouse. Uh, hopefully it's not the mouse that, that there's a theory that uh, a mouse is the thing that um, made quirks happen, like a mutation happen, like, like the Black Plague, but instead of a plague, it gave um, people superpowers and stuff or quirks. Uh, I'm gonna just call them quirks. I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking the binary of industrial or industrial. Um, gave people quirks, and if that's if like Doctor Ujiko has a mouse or a replica of that mouse or a clone or whatever, and he's gonna spread a lot of them across different places, and more people are gonna get quirks later in the future. Um, yeah, this this is looking crazy. This is looking very crazy. Oh man, looking very bad for the heroes. And then with the danger loom thing, like I said before, it's like more danger is going to happen now something i did like 
is something funny is that Spinner and Redesh were the one that, that came up with this name. So that's an interesting collaboration because when I think of Spinner, I don't really think of him being like a high ranking man, member of the former League of Villains. But hey, whatever. Um, Shigaraki, like he said, he doesn't really care for names. So he, he, he probably doesn't even mind that Spinner actually helped um, with the creation of this new name. Now, there is nine commanders. Now, that could command their own their officers nine officers they could command their own people and those officers include twice toga dabi apocrypha redestro spinner skeptic uh, hanabata and there's one more uh, who did i miss there, there's one more but you you get this stuff and it's just like this this can be interesting like nine officers they're gonna they're gonna have their own teams they're gonna have their own team so imagine shigaraki's like um team twice um go go attack this part of the city it's team toga i said toga yeah team toga go go attack this other part of the city it's just it's just because this is crazy like I, i'm just i'm more excited to see how Rikoshi, how horikoshi writes what's going to happen in the side of the heroes and what's he going to do um, for the heroes, like to you know, balance this out because right now it, it's no balance. Like the villains right now have more strength than the heroes. So um, this is just this is just really interesting. I cannot wait to see what happens with that. Um, there was comedy in this chapter as well with twice over here with a shrine of Toga, and then Toga is just like, "Hey, I, I, I'm still alive. Hello, don't make me mad." And then twice is back to his old self, arguing with himself. Um, I do gotta say, Twice really impressed me during this arc with all those clones he created. A lot of clones. It was really amazing. Um, Toga has an eye patch. A lot of people are saying that, you know, Toga lost her eye and stuff. Toga did not lose her eye. She's just really injured right now. And talking about injury, Shigaraki, he's, he was exhausted. He was walking with a cane and he just fell down on the floor. And he still has one hand, which he still is going to use, which... Uh, obviously, we, we don't know which hand it is, but he's going to keep it, and that's all that really matters. So, Horikoshi, once again, he, he, he this is the official end of this arc, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's just really good so far. You know what's interesting is, I have a feeling next arc is not going to be happy and light and stuff, but I think, you know, the paradigm, it, the mood is going to shift. Because when once we leave the villains, and we go to the students, the students... Nobody knows this is happening. Well, they know what happened in Dika, but nobody knows what really happened. They probably just think, oh, it's just 20 random people. They don't know that Shigaraki has an army, has Nomus, has Gigatomachia, which is a monster, like a living monster that he could control. Um, and they're just going to be like, oh, man, that's crazy that happened there. Um, and we got to get stronger or whatever. But I think it's good. the students are going to be laid back for a little bit. And I'm just like, man, I'm just so scared because... High end was so powerful, and then Dr. Ujiko has more nomos. Now, um, Shigaraki asks for more power, and you know, people are speculating what does that more power mean? Is just the, the nomos and stuff? I think it's the nomos, but if there's a way for Dr. Ujiko to actually give Shigaraki more cricks, I hope that's I hope that doesn't happen because obviously Shigaraki is all for one successor. But I don't want him to get multiple quirks as well, just like All for One does. Um, it, it's still possible because the Nomus are, I forgot where they were, they're like artificial beings or something with stolen quirks put into them. And, you know, they're shaped like that and stuff because, you know, the human brain can only, the brain can only, you know, handle so many quirks before it just, that yeah, has no control. So hopefully that's not the case. I don't want Shigaraki to have multiple quirks. This decay is good enough. He already got enough resources to make up for Midoriya having, um, be it six quirks, I believe it is, or five quirks, whatever it is. Um, so, yeah. Gotta say, My Hero Academia is doing really good. And because my good friend Chaotic Plus made me that thumbnail, I asked him to color the panel for me, and he did, even though, you know, he was working on his own thing. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna end this with his outro. This is Chaotic Plus outro. But before that, I'm a, I, I gotta give the chapter a, a rating. Sometimes I forget to give a rating, or sometimes I leave it to the end, then I remember. Uh, but I'm definitely going to give this chapter a 9.5 out of 10. This is... A great ending to the arc. 
it was so good and it was it's just super cool to see all these characters um mature so much and get so much character progression and then see <laughs> see me Destro's character regression it, i'm gonna call it character regression <laughs> character regression Redestro went from a joker character to like a little a literal clown like that's so funny so um that's it for this review now for chaotix plus um this is his outro he says he says all right ladies and gentlemen Remember, always remember Toga is waifu, Toga is laifu. Peace.